In this video, I will explain to you the reabsorption and secretion in the distal granulated tubule and collecting ducts of the nephron. We will discuss this reabsorption and secretion in two parts. The distal granulated, the early part of the distal granulated tubule and the late part of the distal granulated tubule. As the early part of the distal granulated tubule share its characteristics with the thick ascending link of the loop of Henle, so we will discuss, discuss its reabsorption separately. While the late part of the distal granulated tubule share its characteristics with the cortical collecting tubules, so we will discuss its reabsorption collectively. The early part of the distal granulated tubule reabsorbs around 5% of the filtered load of sodium. Along with it, the other electrolytes like chloride, magnesium, and calcium are also reabsorbed. The later parts of the distal granulated tubule and the cortical collecting tubules reabsorb sodium, chloride, bicarb, and water in the presence of antidiuretic hormone, while hydrogen and potassium are being secreted into this segment. The medullary collecting ducts reabsorb urea and water again in the presence of antidiuretic hormone while hydrogen is secreted into the medullary collecting ducts. Let's discuss in detail tubular reabsorption in the early parts of the distal cannulated tubule. Again, we have a tubular cell over here. This is a tubular lumen interstitium, and the peritubular capillary. As with all the other tubular cells, the very important transporter that is located in the basal and the lateral membrane of the tubular cells is the sodium-potassium ATPase pump that is going to reabsorb three sodium out of the tubular cell and is going to secrete two potassium inside the tubular cell. The similar pump is located on the lateral membrane reabsorbing 3-sodium and secreting 2-potassium within the tubular cell. Again, due to this reabsorption of sodium, a chemical gradient is created that leads to the reabsorption of sodium from the apical membrane by the sodium chloride co-transporter. This reabsorption of sodium will lead to co-transport of 1-chloride ion along with this sodium. As one positive ion is reabsorbed with one negative ion into the tubular cell, so this reabsorption is called as electroneutral. The chloride ion that is reabsorbed into the tubular cell is taken up into the interstitium via the chloride transporters or chloride channels which are located on the basilar side of the tubular cell. The chloride is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. As in the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, the secretion of potassium into the tubular lumen leads to development of an electropositivity inside the tubular lumen. This electropositivity inside the tubular lumen drives the paracellular reabsorption of magnesium, calcium, and sodium into the interstitium. So there is reabsorption of sodium, chloride, magnesium, calcium from the early segments of the distal convoluted tubule. It is important to remember that this segment is again impermeable to water and urea. So there is water inside the tubular lumen and because of the presence of more water inside the tubular lumen, this segment is also called as the diluting segment and this part is hypoosmotic to plasma. Let's discuss the reabsorption in the later segments of the distal convoluted tubule and the cortical collecting tubule. The collecting tubules are placed in the cortex as well as in the medulla. The reabsorption in the cortical parts of the collecting tubule is almost same as that in the later segments of the distal convoluted tubule. We will discuss them together. This part is important in the reabsorption of sodium chloride bicarb and water in the presence of antidiuretic hormone and the secretion of hydrogen and potassium. Two important cells are present in these segments of the nephron, the principal cells and intercalated cells. In the principal cells on the basolateral membrane, we have the sodium potassium ATPase pump. This pump reabsorbs three sodium into the 
interstitium well pumps to potassium into the principal cells leading to accumulation of potassium inside the cell. On the apical side of the membrane we have very important channels called epithelial sodium channels. These channels lead to the reabsorption of sodium because of the chemical gradient created on first part by this sodium potassium ATPase pump. Because of the reabsorption of sodium through the epithelial sodium channels, the tubular lumen becomes relatively negative. Now we have another important channel located on both the apical and the basal side of the principal cells. These are the potassium channels. The potassium can move in the potassium can move in both direction into the tubular lumen as well as into the interstitium depending on the negativity present uh, on both sides. So because of reabsorption of sodium, the tubular lumen is relatively negative. Because of relatively negative charge in tubular lumen, the potassium ions are passively secreted into the tubular lumen. Okay, now remember again that this part is impermeable to water. The water is present inside the tubular lumen. When this part becomes permeable to water, whenever a person becomes dehydrated, the body needs to retain water. On the principal cells, as we can see here that very important receptors are located which are called the V2 receptors or vasopressin 2 receptors. These are receptors for a very important hormone in the body which is called as vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone that is released from the posterior pituitary. Inside the principal cells, we can see that we have special vesicles containing a very important protein which is called as aquaporin 3. Then we have other vesicles which have the same protein uh, which is called as aquaporin 2. So what happens that whenever a person is dehydrated, there is less water inside the body and the body needs to retain water the, because of dehydration, the osmolarity of the body increases. That stimulates the third center or the osmoreceptors in the organum musculosum located inside the brain. The Stimulation of the osmoreceptors lead to release of a very important hormone from the posterior pituitary, which is called the antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone reaches the V2 receptors via the circulation. The antidiuretic hormone binds to its receptors on the principal cells. It leads to increase in intracellular cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP leads to the activation of protein kinase A. Protein kinase A then leads to exocytosis of these channels on the apical side. The aquaporin 2 channels then move towards the apical part of the principal cells while the aquaporin 3 channels move towards the basal side of the principal cells. These channels when they get embedded on the apical and the basal side of the principal cells leads to reabsorption of water from the tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries. So in this way, the principal cells or these segments of the nephron can reabsorb water in the presence of antidiuretic hormone and leads to the formation of concentrated urine and retention of water inside the body. To summarize, the principal cells of distal convoluted tubule late segment and the cortical collecting tubule leads to the reabsorption of sodium, secretion of potassium and reabsorption of water in the presence of antidiuretic hormone.